In this video, we will discuss arrhythmia mechanism. Arrhythmia may be due to increased or decreased pacemaker activity, re-entry or circus movement, number three, automaticity, number four, abnormal depolarization, that is early after depolarization or late or delayed after depolarization, number five, ectopic pacemaker activity, and number six, congenital and structural cardiac defects. Whatever the cause in the above list, the defect at the cellular level is number one, increased intracellular calcium, number two, defect in sodium potassium conductance, and number three, inhibition of sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now we discussed increased or decreased pacemaker tissue activity. Number one, increased sympathetic activity causes increased pacemaker activity and tachycardia. Catecholamines stimulates both alpha and beta receptors. Beta 1 receptors in the pacemakers increase the calcium current thus increasing the phase 4 slope. Increasing the phase 4 slope causes tachycardia. Catecholamine decrease the action potential duration and early after depolarization amplitude. Number two, increased parasympathetic activity. Increased acetylcholine release in parasympathetic system activates potassium conductance that keeps the membrane depolarized by slowing the phase four rise. So increased phase four causes tachycardia and slowing in the phase four causes bradycardia. Now briefly revising physiology here, resting membrane potential is normally polarized with a negative inside and positive outside. So it's normally polarized. Depolarization causes action potential generation. When sodium enters into the cell, the resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolt goes up to positive because of the sodium entry into the cell. And as hypokalemia and ischemia decreasing the sodium potassium ATPase pump, thus decreasing the repolarization and increasing the phase 4 diastolic depolarization leading to increased firing of the pacemakers. So again phase 4 increase increased firing and tachycardia. Digitalis also inhibits the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So other two causes of decreased sodium potassium ATPase pump are hypokalemia and ischemia also. Number three, decreased pacemaker activity causes bradycardia due to increased vagal tone, carotid sinus hypersensitivity and the degenerative changes. SA node dysfunction occurs in the fifth and the sixth decade whereas AV node dysfunction occurs in a young people due to increased vagal tone. Other than the degenerative changes in the sinoatrial node, bradycardia also occurs in increased intracranial pressure, hypothyroidism and hypoxia. Now re-entry or circus movements. Normally in depolarization, impulse spreads around the AV node by two electrical pathway, one slow and another fast electric pathway. When they meet, they enter the ventricles. But when there is a block or fibrosis, they don't meet each other and the active wave goes around the AV node back into the atrium causing a circus movement that re-enters the atria and causes re-entry arrhythmia, paroxysmal nodal tachycardia. Most common arrhythmia mechanism is re-entry that occurs due to block or fibrosis. Number two, border zone between the infarcted and the failing ventricular myocardium shows remodeling of tissues and altered distribution of cap junctions causing slowed conduction and re-entrant arrhythmia. In chronic ischemic myocardium, there are decreased cap junction proteins, connexin 43, that also causes slowing in the conduction, leading to arrhythmia. Re-entry is the basis of most of supraventricular and ventricular tachycardia. Now abnormal automaticity. Ischemic injury in the ventricles depolarizes adjacent non-ischemic tissues causing automatic ventricular tachycardia. Due to intrinsic automaticity, slow cell-to-cell -cell 
in intramyocardial conduction results in prolongation of the QRS that occurs in scar tissues in prior myocardial infarction and in cardiomyopathy. And number three, sustained ventricular tachycardia occurs due to large macro reentrant circuit or slow ventricular conduction in chronic diseases of the myocardium that more commonly occurs in chronic infarction or cardiomyopathy more in dilated cardiomyopathy and less in acute infarction or myocarditis. So large macro reentrant circuit or sustained VTEC occurs more in chronic infarction and less in acute infarction and myocarditis. And the most common cause of ventricular tachycardia is heart muscle scarring from a previous myocardial infarction. Now, arrhythmia mechanism in structural heart diseases. Number one, cells that survive in the myocardial infarction. Calcium is released from their sarcoplasmic reticulum leading to arrhythmia. Ischemic myocardium may depolarize the adjacent and ischemic area causing VTAC. Number two, ischemia increases lysophospholipids in the myocytes leading to sodium and calcium overload. Number three, slowing in the conduction leads to re-entry arrhythmia. Number four, delayed ventricular repolarization in cardiac hypertrophy and failure predisposes to arrhythmia. And number five, in ischemia and congestive heart failure, use of drugs causing action potential prolongation causes increased intracellular calcium leading to arrhythmia. So in structural heart diseases, the borderline between the infarcted and the normal tissues causes release of calcium leading to arrhythmia and ischemia increases lysophospholipid that leads to sodium and calcium overloads and slowing of conduction leads to arrhythmia. Number four, delayed repolarization in cardiac hypertrophy and failure predisposes to arrhythmia and the use of drugs that cause action potential prolongation that also causes increased intracellular calcium. Now prolonged QT interval and action potential causing triggered activity. Normal maximum QT interval is 450 milliseconds. If QT interval is more than 500 milliseconds, that increases the risk of torsodipontis and VTEC by more than one and a half folds. And if QT interval is increased by more than 550 milliseconds, then risk of TDP and VTEC increases by more than two folds. Triggered automaticity depends on after depolarization and after depolarization occurs due to increased intracellular calcium. It may be early or late after depolarization causing QT prolongation. The early after depolarization occurs at the end of action potential in the phase 3 and late or delayed after depolarization occurs in phase 4 of the action potential. A delayed after after depolarization occurs due to increased calcium in the cytosol and sarcoplasmic reticulum. Early after depolarization causes action potential and QT prolongation. How it causes action potential and QT prolongation? By increasing the cytosolic calcium by interrupting the orderly repolarization of the myocytes. So what's the treatment for early after depolarization? rapid pacing that shortens the action potential duration and reduces early after depolarization amplitude. So what are the conditions that prolong the early after depolarization? They are hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, bradycardia and the drugs that prolong the action potential class 1a and 3. Early after depolarization also causes PVCs that triggers polymorphic ventricular tachycardia or TDP. Now the mechanism of arrhythmia in genetically determined channelopathies. In congenital long QT syndrome which is an inherited disorder there is mutation in the ion channel that increase the inward sodium or calcium current number one and number two decreases the potassium efflux during the plateau phase of the QT interval the phase two 
So there occurs defect in repolarization that causes increased intracellular calcium and increased action potential time leading to ventricular tachycardia. Heart is structurally normal in LQTS. Potassium infusion in long QT syndrome decreases the QT interval. Now Bergara syndrome there is marked potential difference between the normal endocardium and abnormal epicardium that gives rise to characteristic EKG pattern. In Bergada syndrome, there is mutation in the genes that leads to decreased inward sodium current in the cell membranes of the right ventricular outflow tract. So what's the effect of decreased inward sodium current flow? Sodium causes initial rapid up stroke of the action potential phase 0. So here it is I, as I already explained earlier that's phase 0 it's a rapid entry of sodium that causes depolarization. Sodium causes the resting membrane potential to go up from negative minus 92 positive. So decreased sodium entry causes decreased magnitude of the action potential. Decrease in early peak current in Brigada syndrome leads to slowing of the electrical conduction through the heart muscle. Sodium channel abnormalities causes repolarization defect affecting the right ventricle. An unopposed potassium outflow current leads to dramatic action potential shortening in the epicardium. We have a separate video on both long QT syndrome and Bergada syndrome. For more details, please watch them. Now, ectopic pacemaker foci. Abnormal focus of impulse generation as occurs in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome excites both atria and ventricles, causing QT prolongation. An ectopic foci, unifocal or multifocal impulse generation in the atria or ventricle causes abnormal activity. Rapidly discharging multiple foci in the atria and ventricle cause atrial fibrillation, PVCs, VTAC, and VFib. What's the effect of multiple foci? impulse generation. Multiple foci cause individual muscle fiber they are firing asynchronously so that's unable to push the blood out of the cavity.